Hello everyone, welcome back to Let's Get On With The Urquan Masters, episode, I believe, 13. I just had the pleasure of noting that by skipping a, a save slot, I didn't, like, properly align my save game things like I think I talked about last episode. I can't count this morning. I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> I've been loopy the past two weeks. Uh, I'm going slightly mad. At any rate, if anything, I've just restored the equilibrium, the balance, everything is okay. Let's go ahead and save in that slot and then move on to my next one. Alright, so, yeah, it's last time we ventured forth to the home system of the Spath Spathy and uh, had a chat with them on their moon, and they've charged us with uh, venturing to their home world and destroying the ultimate evil! The evil ones. I can't say that as awesomely as uh, Fwifo can. So, hope you're all ready. Let's do this. By the way, my lander looks a lot more. Oh my god, what are those? Um, you also notice the lander moves much faster now. Uh. Um, okay, they, with their giant eyes, they don't appear to have noticed me, so, let's see if I can sneak and get a kill shot. Success! They don't appear to have noticed me. Hold on, hold on. Success! <laughs> I am Master Assassin Grimoth. You cannot thwart me. Yes! Ha! Alright, perhaps I'm getting overconfident, but... Hey, evil one! Hey! Any of you get the impression maybe this Spothy were... I don't know... Exaggerating a little bit? The truth of the matter is that these evil ones, while being incredibly uh, dangerous, uh, if you actually touch them, they will om nom nom you in self-defense. Um, they really only care for the taste of spathy flesh. Uh, apparently, for whatever reason, humans do not attract or excite them, and I presume we had enough sense not to bring any spathy onto the lander. So, with that in mind, all these uh, little cuddly teddy bear things do is just sit here. They only take one shot to knock down, and you'll notice they don't actually give me that much biological data either, which is extremely unfortuitous. But they do give me some, and this planet is of zero danger to me, so long as I don't foolishly drive into one of them. The only time-consuming thing about this is that there are a lot of them, and I've been artfully driving <laughs> just to show off. And hopefully I don't make the mistake of driving into one of them. Once you take care of all of them though, which I believe I have, I believe there are no more uh, evil ones on the planet, it is simply a matter of leaving. Now you might think that was a tad anticlimactic, and I can't say I blame you. However, not the first time the game's been anticlimactic, right? Not the first time I inspired that, Oh, we're gonna go raid the lunar base! It's gonna be epic! It's gonna be... what the hell? So, with that out of the way, let us head back. After we save the game. Okay? Okay. Hello, your foolishly courageous and noble efforts to rid the evil ones from our beloved Spatiwa. Although we lost many crew, we have eliminated the Scourge. This is wonderful! Too good to be true! We will immediately begin transporting Spotty from this unpleasant moon down to the safe surface. We shall send in Crosslings and the infirm elderly first as a special honor. Of course. Please come back later to receive your accolades. Okay, I'll come back later then. Not a problem for me. Uh, BRB. So, being RB basically means leaving and coming back. Oh, joy! Oh, happy! 
happiness, we rejoice and make merry in celebration of our imminent return to our home world. You are most heroic and helpful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But now I must return to our festivities. Please feel free to come back any time. Hey, a deal's a deal. What about our alliance? Why don't you just wait a while, until after we are resettled on our home world? We can discuss details at that time. Okay, that sounds reasonable. How long do you expect this to take? 10, 15 years past. <laughs> Am I correct in understanding that you refuse to live up to your end of the bargain? No, no, no. We are simply taking a more adult, welcome to the real world view of the situation. We cannot simply say, hurrah, and form an alliance with you this very moment. Surely you see that. You know, those creatures aren't dead. We have them in suspended animation. How would you like us to return them to the surface? No, uh, no, please. Hmm. No! Uh, no, please! Hmm. Exactly what kind of relationship were you thinking of? A mutually beneficial alliance of minds and might, egalitarian fellowship of sentient life forms, or the kind where you do everything exactly as we say. Let's just say a mutually beneficial alliance of minds and might. Huh? A gal egalitarian fellowship of sentient life forms. What? The kind where you do everything exactly as we say. Uh, okay. We are quite familiar with that arrangement. Very well. I'll bet we will regret this decision later on, but you leave me with no choice. We will comply with your needs. A spotty delegation will depart immediately for the planet Earth. Excellent. Woohoo! But hey, I'm not done with you yet. Come back here. Welcome back to Spotiwa, Captain. We hope the material we provided your Starbase engineers... I'm sure it was, as soon as I go back needs. there. Have there been any developments of significance? Perhaps, Captain, I will explain. We have been investigating the caster which we took away from the Umga after the Judd the Bug scandal eight years ago. We have uncovered evidence of something strange going on between the Umga and the Ilrak over the past many years. We suspect that the Unga were using the caster to pull off some kind of long-term joke on the Ilrath, but we are unable to glean any more details. Certainly! About what? Since we never wanted to be in the hierarchy, and we are afraid of all the other members, our knowledge on this subject is a bit limited. But I'll tell you what I know. The hierarchy is the construct of the Earth One. It exists to maintain their supreme authority over all the sentient life forms in the galaxy. As far as we know, there are six other races active in the hierarchy, including the gelatinous Unga pranksters, the multi-legged, super-violent Ilrat, who are fanatical in their worship of Dogar and Kezan, the Tradash, a weak and obnoxious race from the Draconis group of stars, the humanoid clones you call Androsync, though they have been strangely absent for some years, the vain Vox, commanded by the brilliant and eccentric General Zex, and the mysterious Mykon, who ramble endlessly about people, places, and events from long ago as though they happened just today. If there are other hierarchy races, we are not aware of them. Before the evil ones appeared, we spotty were a simple folk. We were content with our calm lives, our rude huts, and our coarse woven turtleneck sweaters. I suppose we could have remained that way for eons, were it not for the sudden arrival of a million voracious monsters from hell. 
We have never quite figured out where they, the evil ones, came from. The few specimens we collected who had mostly died of tooth decay from eating sweet, stuffy flesh were physiologically unlike any other species from Stafiwa. It was as though they had arrived suddenly on the surface of our planet, transported there by some unknown agency. But that is nonsense. Who could be so cruel? You mean the one we helped demolish? That one? Well, we had some contact with Alliance members before the Urquan showed up. Mostly with the Chen Jesu, who stopped off here occasionally when they were on their way to explore the Galactic Core. Actually, their last visit was interesting. They were returning from the Tukane star systems, where they said they had found a new alien race called the Faktok Dick or something like that. The only other race we ever dealt with was the Mernherm, who once tried to colonize Beta Hercules, which we considered within our sphere of influence. When we explained this to the Mernherm, they politely withdrew from the contested star system and never bothered us again. Since we tend to stay close to home, preferably in the living room, we know little about other races beyond our neighbors such as the Umga. Before being subjugated by the Urquan, the Umga were a contented and peaceable race who inhabited the region of stars in which you call Orionis. They spent their time happily exploring and mining the nearby planetary systems and engaging in elaborate and, to our way of thinking, cruel practical jokes. One particularly nasty prank was the time they broadcast a trick message through space declaring the arrival of the Grand Master Planet Eaters or some such nonsense. This caused several alien cultures to go mad with panic, including, you might be surprised to know, ourselves. Like all other races, we have found evidence of the precursors scattered throughout our space. Our belief is that the precursors are not really gone. They simply came to their senses one day and used their superior technology to invent some kind of perfect invisibility shield and remain alive and happy to this day. We hope to rediscover the secret someday and disappear into similar obscurity. One other thing, we haven't been able to translate much of their writing, but we understand one fragment of text. It mentions a sequence of ten artificial waste disposal sites they built somewhere around here. I suspect that even garbage from the precursors would be of incredible value. That's enough info for now. Good. I don't feel much like talking about that anyway. Now that our alliance is firmly est established, could you please transport large quantities of valuable minerals to our ship? No. Damn it. <laughs> Goodbye, council members. Goodbye, Hunam. Damn it, I'm not a Hunam! For kicks and giggles, I'll visit them one more time. Maybe they have more information for me. For us, rather. What can we, the High Spocky Ruling Council, do for you? Have there been any developments of significance? Yes, and the news is not good. As you know, Androsyn face borders our own, and while we never really liked the Androsyn, it seemed that they weren't out to kill us, as everyone else seems to be. Imagine our shock when we learned that they had been invaded and eaten by those fish folk, the oars. Well, actually, we don't know if the oars ate anybody, but we're sure they did something creepy. I sure hope that you're not considering an alliance with them, Captain. They are dangerous. Well, the Spothy consider everyone dangerous, but oh my, some... The oars, some sort of fish-looking folk, have apparently moved into Androsynth space, and the Androsynth, what, have vanished? We haven't met the oars yet, uh, we haven't met the Androsynth, though you should, uh, if you played the original Star Control, know them, and you certainly know of them for what the Starbase Commander said. Um, they uh, definitely had no love for humanity, so perhaps it's not such a loss. Goodbye, Council Goodbye, Hunam. Let's go ahead and pay a visit to you one more time. Whoop. 
Whee! Hello, Captain. What brings you here today? Do you have any more information? I guess we forgot to tell you this a while ago. Sorry. But we've been so busy lately working on the sheet. Uh, preparations for returning to Spatiwa, but I'm afraid it just slipped my mind. Okay, that's all. Hey, I gave you an apology. What more do you want? Oh, right, the thing I forgot. Yes, I remember now. It was something odd that happened to us when we first met the Urquan. We sent out a ship to meet the oncoming dreadnoughts. We wanted to tell the Urquan about the evil ones, so they could safely avoid our planet. But when we got close, the Urquan started blasting out this overwhelming signal. Sentient life! We are the Urquan! Independence is intolerable! Blah blah blah! You get the idea. Anyway, in a moment of panic, G Sentient life! We are the Earth Run! Independence is intolerable! Blah blah blah! You get the idea. Anyway, in a moment of panic, genius, the captain blurted out, Hold! What you are doing to us is wrong! Why do you do this thing? To everyone's amazement, the Orquan fleet stopped dead in space. The Orquan fixed a tight communication beam on the ship, and the creature spoke a long while and with great passion, almost as though it were intoning a high ritual. The words he spoke were of planet-shaking significance, at least. We assume so. We can't really be sure, because all of the spotty on board at the time were curled tightly in their shell cases and couldn't hear very well. Maybe if you get the opportunity, Captain, you can try to ask the question again. Very interesting. I had, uh... I had forgotten the, uh... Spathy would share such information. I'm glad I chose to keep coming back here like a yo-yo. Goodbye, Shunem. Oh, do you have anything else for me? Also, that was, uh... It's probably you're getting a little shady there in what they've been saying, right, folks? You can't trust those guys as far as you can Hello, throw them. Captain. What brings you here today? I'm just saying. Development? What development? Whatever are you talking about, Captain? Are you implying that, <laughs> that we have some kind of secret plan? How wrong you are, <laughs> Our feelings are injured by your unwarranted accusation. Apologies would be appropriate at this time. <laughs> hey, are you up to something fishy? 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 What is this, fishy? No, nothing fishy here. <laughs> totally fishless there. Now the fact resolved, is there anything else you would like to talk about, Captain? Mm. What are you doing? <laughs> Most suspicious. Goodbye. Oh, we've learned a lot of valuable information from these spathy. Certainly, uh, it's probably worth whatever nefarious activities they are up to. Perhaps taking the place of the evil ones. Now, they mentioned among other things. You mean, well, I guess I, I'm actually not going to go over what they mentioned. You can write that down in your little gumshoe journals or whatever. Instead, I think I'm... Well, I don't know. Do I want to blow through all of this? Is there anything in Spathy Space I want to explore? You know, just for kicks and giggles? You know, my, uh... My, uh... My resource units aren't going to regenerate on their own. I don't know. Maybe. I mean, while I'm on my way there to the Zogfot pick, that way I can uh, intentionally delay them as a cliffhanger for next time. I suppose I can go through some star systems and explore around a bit. Although, I reckon I could do that on my way back from there, too. I tell you what, you know, I'm feeling so generous. Let's go ahead and meet them. Where's their star system? Here it is? Okay. Let's go. Oh, hold on. I'll choose the way to get out of the star system. We'll try that again. Alpha Tukane. Here we go. Zogfot Pick. Yoo. 
right here. Let's go. Uh oh. Although we're about to get into an encounter. Hello, Captain Ally Hunam. We are here in this place at this time just like you. How wonderful. Hi, folks. What's new? Very little, I'm afraid. We've just been watching the stars. You know, actually, there was something that happened the last month on the 17th. We saw a new star appear between the Surakini and Chandrasekhar star clusters. We watched it and watched it for three days. We just watched it. Then it went away, vanished just like that. I hope it comes back. Whoa! All right, Spothy are just full of information. If you if you turn down the capability to become allies of the Spothy, look at what you'd be missing. An unknown star appeared between. Yes, last month when? on the 17th, we saw a new star appear between the Surakini and Chandrasekhar star clusters. Mm. We watched it and watched it for three days. We just watched it. Then it went away, vanished just like that. I hope it comes back. Allies, grant us the boon of your wisdom. But as we are here out in deep space, we learn little of interest. Aww. I suggest you consult the more interesting folk at Spafiwa. Please share your mineral wealth with us as allies. As you wish. Your waste <laughs> recycling unit is at your disposal. There you will find a piece of methane, sulfurous gas, and some interesting organic compounds. Feel free, take what you want. What do you guys do for fun out here in deep space? We used to be bored, but then we bought this cool entertainment product. It simulated a grand adventure through a thousand parsecs of hostile space, where we met interesting aliens, uncovered the secrets of a long-lost superior race, and eventually, to save our world from destruction, we had to face the drive! Never mind, I can tell you aren't really interested. Oh, Spavi. How dare you break the fourth wall. Shame to you. Anyway. Interesting. Oh boy. More in potential encounters. But we're going to zip right past them. You can't catch me, neener neener. Now, if I hadn't upgraded my ship with so much capability and power, who knows, maybe they could actually catch me. That'd be a shame. Because I don't think they're all spotty. <laughs> By the way, the Zonkfot pick are really all the way out here in the middle of nowhere. Seriously, they couldn't pick a more convenient location? What the hell? What is wrong with you? But we're here to make good on everything, so we're gonna go ahead and form this alliance thing and oh crap, there's a lot of spheres. Well, maybe they're a part of this this team. Those people. So we shouldn't have anything to worry about. Long trip. While we're here, I think we'll do some planetary exploration. Don't mind me. I mean, since we're here, we might as well. Let's see what we can find. Treasures? Oh, hey, treasures! What do you know? This planet is very safe for us, too. I approve. So let's go pilfer it. Whee! We travel super fast! And we carry a lot of cargo, too. So we have to make fewer trips. We get to make fewer trips. We can still make a lot of trips. See, you guys are all stressing out, like, Can you cut out the... The unfun planetary exploration. Can you just cut videos all together? <laughs> Come on. It's like so quick now. What is wrong with you people? But it's so lame and boring. <laughs> <laughs> but it ruins the authenticity of the game. I already damaged the game's authenticity by pausing during combat situations and very inconvenient planets, which should not really exist. Not many. Not anymore. For example, I think we'll go ahead and hazard traveling uh, on this primordial world here. Or exploring down here. Test out the, uh, the tech, you know, the earthquake resistant upgrades. And, 
uh, test out my super ability to shoot. Notice that lightning bolts still murder us. Notice that those guys are attempting to murder us, too. Wow. Lightning has definitely made up for everything, hasn't it? Like, you want to be completely immune to everything? <laughs> You'll also note that, uh... Just because you have, like, say, earthquake resistance, that doesn't mean you have earthquake, or, you know, damage, complete damage immunity. The planet can still own your soul, okay? You still have to be somewhat reasonably quick and careful. You just can't risk everything. So don't get too careless and uh, confident. Don't get overconfident. Especially not in the face of that. I hate inclement weather so much. Stupid lightning bolts. The Melnor may are intentionally taunting me <laughs> by uh, offering that upgrade, which I so wanted and desired more than anything else. Stupid lightning. Yeah, again, it's like, oh yeah, it's like, oh, it's only a weather class three. You don't have to worry about that planet at all, no. Lightning bolt, lightning bolt, lightning bolt, lightning bolt. <laughs> Screw you, game. Screw you. We didn't lose that much crew, though, so that wasn't too bad. Oh, yeah. how, how generous of the lightning to be right there waiting for me. Damn it. That wasn't worth a whole lot. Oi. Oi. Stop killing my crew. Oi. <laughs> I just pick up a bunch of stuff. We're not going to do a whole lot of planetary exploration at all. So I do just want to pick up some cargo. Hurry! Stop nomming me! Okay. Oh, I'm full up! Okay. Game got a parting shot in me right there. Then, in that case, I'm actually gonna go back to the planet then. Get some more, since there's still some more there. Why not? My crew's like, oh god, don't send us back, please. Ow. Again, so there's definitely a lot of excitement to be had, particularly on a planet like this. Probably should not be moving over that. But, uh, I am actually an idiot, so... Oops, I shot the mineral. It's the first time I shot one of those folks, and you can see they disappear. But I'm never coming back to this planet. So, it's a shame, but... Eh. Lost 17 crew there? 17 crew in exchange for what? Well, I had some stuff. I got some stuff. Mostly worthless crap, but I got some stuff, okay? Worst case, I can just uh, drop off that stuff. And I, I got some biological units, so I can, uh... I mean, I've, I got 143, that's almost 150, that's almost 300, that means that's 300 credits, that means that's almost two technological upgrades. Was it worth the 17 crew? Yeah, we also had some fun. And exploring a planet like that, you got to see that the upgrades are not perfect. Some of you thought that they would bestow total immunity. The game does not say total immunity. The game says resistant. I don't know all the percentages, but resistant means resistant. Also, hello, Arik World. Why couldn't you just have earthquakes? Why do you have to have lightning bolts? Because the game hates me. I could, I could get that upgrade now. You know, I was considering that, like, just uh, farm, just like going to like one planet with biological life forms long enough to get that. On the bright side, super speed means I don't spend that much time on a planet. Really saves my bacon, as it were. Oi. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> 
And you know what? I think I'll uh make one third one trip one I'll make one more trip to the planet. Wow. <laughs> No. I'm not taking that. No. Screw you, game. I'll be right back. <sighs> this game, folks. This game. Planet's completely, uh, satellite is completely, uh, mapped out. Someone was like, why aren't you saying moon, by the way? The natural satellite, folks. It works. Oh, and hello. <laughs> It is the alien from the Tengesters Alliance. Just look at those weapon pods on his ship. We hope that during this visit, we can make clear to your species the benefits of a mutual assistance act. But we're also armed to the teeth. So don't try stealing our atmosphere or anything sneaky like that. We had a close call last week. One of those black ships was snooping around the system. But before it got to our world, some of the green ships warped in, destroyed the black vessel, and then left immediately. We got lucky! No, we have nothing new to report. Nope, not a thing. How wonderful! We accept! Hooray! How marvelous! Yeehaw! Captain, we are delighted that your people have made this choice. Now we won't get slaughtered. In exchange for our cooperation helping you with captains and ship designs, all that we ask for is your protection. So we don't get slaughtered. We shall begin fulfilling our commitment at once. We will transport officers and our stinger design to your base immediately. Why heck? Maybe I'll even make the trip to your planet. I'd make a good starship, Captain. Captain, I'm pretty darn mean in a fight, and there ain't nobody better than me with a thrusty stinger tongue attack. Sure, what do you want to know? Just ask away. Not much, to tell the truth. This space exploration stuff is uh, kind of new to us. Besides the green alien ship, which have only tried to kill us, and the black alien ship, which have actually been quite successful at killing us. The only other starships we have encountered are strange tumbling red probes, which profess to be on a peaceful mission. But then attack like slavering the Brankies. We believe that the probes are actually robotic scouts, which have suffered some kind of malfunction resulting in their aberrant behavior. And what's worse, they are multiplying. Yes, that's true. The probes seem to be replicating at a geometric rate. Hey! That means if there was only one last week, then next month... Uh, wait a minute. Let me calculate. Uh, uh, that means next month there'll be a whole mess of those things. By backtracing the probe's course path, we have been able to calculate that the source of the probes is somewhere on a direct line that includes our star and Epsilon Muscae. Go get them, Captain! Very interesting. A direct line from our star and Epsilon Muscae. Something perhaps you gumshoes can look at at another time. In the meantime, tell me more about your people. Ah, cultural exchange. A good idea. Yeah, let's tell him about Frungi. Be quiet, you fool. He asked a serious question. He doesn't want to know about Frungi. How do you know? What makes you so smart? You never even asked him if he wants to know about Frungi. Why, I bet right now he's wondering, what is this wonderful sport, Frungi? How is it played? What kind of equipment do you need to play Frungi? And I wonder who's ahead in the Frungi Championship. Ah, would you shut up about Bungie? If you say another word about that stupid game, I'm going to lose control and blow a cloud of spores at you. Yeah, okay, okay. Don't blow your sack. I won't mention Bungie again. I promise. Well, Captain, as you can probably see, our culture's predominant trait, its greatest strength and weakness, is the diverse interactions between Zot, Pot, and Fig. Bungie, Bungie, Bungie! 
The Stinger is the peak of our technological prowess. It's totally awesome! These vessels are cheap to build and can be quite effective in short-range combat. They turn on a, on a, well, small round thing that's real small. Remember, though, against most ships, the Stinger must close distance immediately and give unrelenting tongue attacks until either the enemy or the Stinger are destroyed. Yeah, the tonguing is the best part! <laughs> Does that guy in back ever say anything? Nope. Not a word. What was your history like? Our past? Quite a broad topic for this short conversation. But we'll share a key piece of our history with you. After we killed off the last of Brighton, we faced an interesting question. Should we proceed and establish a culture which would advance in art, technology, and social sophistication? Or should we just go back into the forest and kick back and enjoy ourselves, knowing that as a bronchi wasn't going to jump out of the bush and eat us? Well, we did go back into the forest. We stayed there for about 5,000 years and had a great time. Then, one stormy day, a zock, a fox, and a pig were walking up a steep path looking for something good to eat when a bolt of lightning struck nearby. With a huge flash of light, the bolt of energy carved a strangely shaped chunk of granite out of a cliff. It was a disc with a hole in the middle. As the rock began to roll down the hill toward the three terrified beings, some dry grass got caught in its hole. And since the rock was still hot, the grass caught on fire. When the rock finally got to the dock, the fox and the pet, they simultaneously discovered the wheel, fire, and religion, thus catapulting them on the road of progress. Which has led us to this day, Captain. Oh, how did the flaming wheel give religion to our culture, you ask? I will explain. You see, when it got to the threesome, the flaming wheel was going at a pretty good clip, and it ran smack into the rock, killing him. The fought and the pit felt so bad. They really liked that sock. That they decided the sock hadn't really died when the wheel flattened him. He had just gone to a better place. Presumably one without lethal flaming wheels. That's enough info for now. Thanks. Anything else? Bye, Zonk. Bye, Fought. Bye, Pick. Goodbye, Captain. See ya. Now, before we finish with them, I'm curious to do the same thing that the Spathy did. And casually turn around here. And slip back in. Welcome back to our world. Yeah, welcome back to our world. I just said that. So? It doesn't mean I can't say it, too. He's trying. Do you always get to talk first? That's not fair. Sorry, that's just the way it is. Well, why? That doesn't make sense. Look, don't ask me. I think it's something technical. Yeah, right. I'm so sure. What a lame excuse! <laughs> it's been pretty quiet, Captain. Nothing new to report. Are you crazy? What about the Fungi Championships? Why should we tell the Earth Captain about that? He wouldn't be interested. Oh, yeah? How do you know? Because I'm not even interested. Nobody with any brains is interested in Frungy. Well, what about me, huh? I love Frungy. It's a sport of kings. Gee. Oh, all right. He wouldn't know any of the teams anyway. No, we have nothing new to report. Nope. Not a thing. Bye, Zog. Bye, Fod. Bye, Pig. Goodbye, Captain. See ya. I think that takes care of this video, folks. Hope you all have learned lots of new information, both from our Spathy allies and our Zog Fod Pig allies. Coming back, we're going to... Well, I don't know what we're going to do. We're going to do something, though. Explore the galaxy! <laughs> Explore with me next time!